do I keep the Jesus shirt on or not? And my fly and my Jesus shirt. Fantastic said, keep it on. Most sister one says, keep the Jesus shirt on. Most sister two, you said what? Keep the Jesus shirt on. Me too. You know what I'm saying? It is so befitting for the time run by love. That's the crazy part. It's so befitting. But that's not going to be. So we good. What you mean? Fine. Like. But I want you to get something that's more comfortable, like where you, you, I know you have like some lounging in it, even if like you put on something, you're like, okay, let me go ahead and put this on, but I want to put the blanket or whatever. Oh. That type uh, of feel. I don't want you to like, this is our first episode back. I want us to be as comfortable as possible. This is actually, <clears throat> I'm comfortable because the votes were in. That's why I'm comfortable. The votes were in. They said, hey, keep yeah, the Jesus keep shirt on. Keep Jesus peace shirt. So, I mean, um, I can. I just didn't want, like, you know. Listen, they, 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 this is our podcast. They can't shut us down. <laughs> and if they do, I just make another one and say Tiff Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. I know what to do. Like, it's just, but I want us to. You want me to be comfortable? I, yeah, I'm really not. Like, like I'll be honest. I'm I don't want this season to be built off. Like, if you pay attention to uh, a lot of our stuff, we was like dolled up. We would go change shirts. <laughs> we would like do a lot of extra. We would be in. I would be in PJ bottoms you know in the top. <laughs> so, like this time around, like I feel like, and I think if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I need to check though. Let me let let me check. Though. You so say you want me to go switch real quick? While she while while she switches, I'm gonna check. So I don't wanna be I wanna be accurate, you know what I'm saying? And uh we'll get back to you soon. Um Welcome back to the podcast. I am Mr. Made Over. <laughs> so I ain't doing this time. I kept it real slick and cool. But you're supposed to because it's the podcast anyway. We never go loud. Sometimes I'll do you like that. You so loud. You're so loud. You're so loud. And I am Tiff, and I want to say welcome to the Mo and Tiff podcast. Thank you, actually, for <laughs> tuning in. I did do the research and I checked, and we are in our second Whoa. season. You good? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We are in our second season, and no actually we finished our second season we finished the second season and we are now in season trace 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 right trace i'm not i'm not i'm not you know like nobody know. Said. um <laughs> season three episode 40. we've done that many we've done now is 40. that just podcast or is that everything? That's 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 just strictly podcast. We did forty. Forty. Jeez. I know. Hmm. Which means we're close to half. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which is incredible. I think I think a lot of times, and I had to go back and see. We had consistency, but. There's always a there's always a, uh, a, a a different curve to it that if we would have stayed the course, where would we be? <laughs> where would we be? But it wasn't. I mean, but the if we had stayed the course, but it wasn't the things that took us off course was not by choice. And that's why we're here to talk about. The wins and the losses. <laughs> I mean, and we're gonna jump right in because you know, like I don't want to. I'm gonna be waiting. I want to beat around the bush. Can I drop this? Can I drop that? Is that better? It, it means your word. You know. Okay. I just you know. What, whatever, whatever's comfortable for you. There we go. Okay. No, it just looks weird. 
hanging. We done thought it was a bug. But like, ah! Are you going to uh, want water at all or anything like that before we get started? I'm going to drink your water. <laughs> then that's going to be. I'm going to drink your water. No, I'm fine right now. Because I don't want to, you know. Sometimes, you know, if I drink too much, I might belch, and that's not cool. <laughs> hey, man, hold on, I'm telling you, you gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta feel comfortable. Belching. I know. At some point, you have to feel comfortable. To I'm feel not comfortable. finna, nah, I'm not finna belch on the camera now. Nah, hey. <laughs> They'll be like, Stop. put her in the loudest belching competition. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to you. I'm just gonna. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, trying to think. Do I want to rock with a blanket over me? I feel left out. I only got a blanket because you told me to get a blanket. I said that would make you comfortable. Oh, um, you, know you t- well, oh yeah, you did say get comfortable, but it's yeah. cold. You know, or it was cold. Today we are discussing our wins and our losses, and I think it's so easy to talk about wins. Is it? I think so. Unless you think it's not easy to talk about wins. I mean, no, I'm just no. You saying? <laughs> no, just you no. Know, I think hmm. I think that it's easy to talk about wins. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why it's not working. The other one though is out too. That one's still needed. Okay. All right, but I think it's easy to talk about wins. If you remember them. Do you remember all your wins? Wins are definitely... A lot of wins are... are, If you ever pay attention, the things that I say I don't remember, nine times out of ten are stuff that, like, I think I just push out of my head or really Mm -hmm. push out of my mind because it doesn't make you... It it doesn't make me feel good to think about it. Mm. What, the losses? Yeah. Gotcha. Because I feel like if I... If I continue to think about the losses, that I it's going to be a daily depression. Oh, I get what you're saying. To think about losses to me is a downer. It's like it's, it's something like if you want to feel bad, think about your losses. Unless you're like me, I'd be like, okay, that. Even though that happened, I'm like, but that still, that's what made me who I am to this day. Like, okay, I see what you My saying. wins and my losses to me make me who I am today. Can't separate, can't, like, you can't no, do you mean, without yeah, you one. Can't. You so, can't. So I think to talk about these losses, you know, um, <laughs> to talk about these losses, I believe... It's always victory at the end of them. Pay attention. Yeah. You know. I mean, they end up becoming or bringing about, not necessarily bringing about a win, but bringing uh, bringing it around to where it looks like, or it, it takes the negative away that it was a loss. Like, what do you gain or what do you learn? What's this pillow I don't know. It's just chilling, too. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> but when you, okay, so like when you are looking at losses and when you are picking them apart, what you have to think about is, okay, is it one, is it truly a loss? And then two, what do you learn from it in the process? Gotcha. Like, that's how I see it. Like, okay, I lost. All right, so I lost. Now what? Okay, how do I redeem myself? How do I come back from that particular loss? And it could do one or two things, like you said. If I'm thinking about that loss, I'm gonna either one be depressed, or yeah. two, I gotta get myself out of it because talking about it is also a release. And then in the process, not only are you releasing things, but you could also be helping somebody else in the process of. That. I had to put my ring on for somebody. You oh did. snap! Uh, they yeah, having yeah, real yeah. problems. Yeah, I, they just doing this podcast to show that they acting like they together. I just got like, fat fingers, so I can't. Yeah, so it is my fingers. That's how I see losses. Okay. 
And then, I mean, your wins can be wins for several reasons. Your wins can be enough for you. Your wins can also be a win because you're able to take that win and do something constructive with it. So it's not always, I've learned, um, dang, I'll be 39 this year. <laughs> I've learned See, in these 38 I, and almost few months. I feel like. <laughs> At least older people 38 now, and, 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 and I feel like older people coming. because when people like man I'm turning any any age <laughs> below my age I feel like keep living like keep a living like you really like you haven't seen nothing at yet at least like, 38 years and 9 months but <laughs> 7 um, months let's go over let's discuss some of our losses that we Ooh. have encountered Jesus since you know, not being on for this year for, podca- for I mean, year. even even podcasts, uh, food reviews, food reviews, even just being I being mean, out present. Period, though. Yeah, I think we took a hiatus for like a year. Has it been a year? I thought we posted at least what? No, it was a year. Did I post something without you? Just to keep you did. did I post it something? was a it was a full year for. It was a full year for me. No. Did you? No, we went all were we all the way down? I don't know. But I know it it, it was Wait, I think you did. Yeah, you did because that was the McRib and those yeah. So oh. you did food reviews, but we didn't do podcasting. Yeah. But like it was technically we it was like a bounce in, bounce out. It wasn't a yeah, it wasn't a uh Yeah. It wasn't even where we are now. You know I But it was it was about a year. Yeah. Like we were we were completely I mean we got hit with some waves. And also I just want y'all and who who those people who do content do not be afraid to step back and yeah. recuperate. As they always say, life be life. Life be life. But don't let content be contenting. Right. You have to be able to take that step back and come back fully charged. Right. And I think that's what it is for us. But we tried. Uh, <laughs> but it wasn't the same. We want to give y'all that. We, you know, yeah. That we regular, we tried. Regular degular. We we tried to. Uh, we did. We tried to come back, and it just it just was not. We weren't ready. Like, I think we thought we were ready, but we really weren't ready. Like, for real. I think I was ready. If I, it, it, like, yeah. I always feel like I'm content ready. No, we weren't. You weren't ready. I always feel like, I'm I'm telling you, like, because this, this is my thing. I know we're supposed to be doing content together. That's the only thing. Yeah, but that's what I said. We weren't, you weren't ready. That's why I said, like. I was ready, but collectively together, we were not ready. We were not ready, mm. and that's what it, that's the difference between doing going solo and actually doing team stuff, right? Like, and then we didn't want to we didn't want it forced either, and that was the other part. Like we didn't want content forced. Yeah. So. So. Losses. Losses. Let's start. Um, I think the last one we did, yeah, it had, it's been a year for me, because the last one we talked about was the weight loss journey. The it was all of that. Yeah, you talking about Dang, that? That was the journey. Uh, we were talking about uh, if you wanted to continue doing food reviews. Yeah, and and I think we also were talking about Gigi. Yeah. And a few of them, and what we were doing in that, we didn't give full detail of what was going on, but we did mention that we that Gigi well, was here, we were yeah the that last one was um it was trying to me trying to figure out and you having the concern with either one are we going to go hard with food reviews, and if we are going to go hard with food reviews. We need to make sure that we're making the correct and healthy decisions for me. And so that was really kind of where we were Mm -hmm. in trying to figure out, okay, 
what are we going to do? And, and was I going to pull back and only kind of make cameo appearances when you did do certain food reviews, mm-hmm. but you were going to go full force. And then that part. And then we were also, uh, Gigi wasn't here at that time, but she had already gone through her procedures and we were just kind of hit miss with everything. Cause everything okay. else hadn't occurred. Cause that was like, this was like March, April. Let's talk about the uh, different procedures that, Gigi was going through because okay. I think this is the honest um, of so this was April of last no this was probably like March of last year whenever that last one was y'all um I can't remember that last episode that we did sure um right there. Hmm. oh that one my bad <laughs> my bad camera sorry yeah I'm looking here here I don't know he didn't tell me what to look our stuff is right here right here but cameras cameras right there okay so let me i'm gonna readjust it since camera's there i see now i see why you leaning in that's a little bit better all right so um april it had to be like march or april i don't know anyway one of those don't don't really be concerned with the dates yeah so basically what what was going on is that um my grandmother was with us and then some things were going on health wise that we knew and then we knew that there had to be um we opted for her consent for a procedure and so that procedure was um having going in for brain surgery so that they could drain fluid off her brain Mm -hmm. um and so once we did that that's when other things became um there was a they just call it a tumor. We don't know what kind of tumor, but there was a tumor that was on her brain, um, on the pineal gland, and it was a very tricky spot. And yeah. so that was surgery number one, really trying to really just go in and drain the fluid. But when they wanted to biopsy because we wanted to see if it was a cancerous mass, um, it kind of bled out more than what they thought. So they had to kind of like leave it alone. Um, and then that was procedure number one and that was the procedure that she had for that was thanksgiving of 20 21 mm-hmm. and then december i think it was like december of 2021 that's when we end up having to go right back in um or they had to go right back in because some things weren't doing what they were supposed to do um as far as that and then it had to be another procedure and they had to actually put the shunt in because they were draining it. And then they had to put a shunt in her brain trying to drain the fluid. And so between those two surgeries, um, it was just kind of like trying to make the best decisions for her and for us. Because at that time we were traveling back. We were on back and forth on the road. Yeah. Um, I was Quite video, often, yeah. I was video calling all the time in the midst of still trying to work and be a wife and be a mama, um, all of the things. And so then um, it got really sketchy and she wasn't making progress the way they thought she should. So like she couldn't talk. Um, Then she got to the point where they were like, she wasn't swallowing um, properly. And so um, I forgot the technical term of it, but basically they were concerned about that. She was not recovering the way she was supposed to be recovering according to her neurosurgeon Mm -hmm. um and so then when january rolled around it got a little bit sketchy a little bit nervous because we were like "Ooh, what's going on because it was almost like she was taking a turn for the worse and so we had to pretty much just drop everything and go and that's when we went to Jacksonville just so we can kind of see. She went through, uh, they put her, um, moved her out of ICU. She went to all of the rehab type places. So we, we had to do a lot of medical stuff um, for for that. Yeah. And so um, once we did that and I was kind of able to see and assess the position of that she was in or the situation she was in. We kind of went from there and it was still, you know, nonverbal. Uh, it was 
words here and there, but it was inaudible. Um, and so we couldn't really understand. So it was kind of like a decline, but it still wasn't the progression that her doctors wanted her to have. Mm-hmm. Um, in that whole little gist. But January after January, if we got after we got over that hump in January, then we, for the most part, we were kind of, I can say smooth sailing, but considering the situation, it was kind of like, okay, we smooth sailing for right now. And we were just kind of waiting and just riding it out because we knew it was still a very sensitive um, situation. And I think it was good to um, have the people that we had in our corner too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, kind of walking us and, and, and coaching us through this thing. It was challenging in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like a repeat because I remember, you know, my grandma, but actually both my grandmas, both of those losses. So for me, me and Gigi, we (laughs) we were pretty close. We were pretty close. We were very close very close especially towards the end of of of, of, of things like mm. we were like that my home girl right there you know what i'm saying um <laughs> i like i have so many I, I i have a lot of great memories of uh, uh of just who she is as a person and i i let my wife continue to tell you know the things that happen you know mm-hmm. because it, it was when i tell you there's this and it's the reason why this first episode is called the wins and the losses because um it's life mm-hmm. <laughs> like when i tell you it it it, 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 it is life life so continue bae um so there was, I know there was an instance where I forgot what happened, but she had to be taken to the hospital again. Um, and we were trying to figure out like what was going on. And that was the most difficult thing is um, I was a teacher trying to teach and I'm having to take medical related phone calls from her trying to just function. Um, and like you said, outside of the support system that we had, um luckily the people i worked with were very understanding were very um gosh like the grace was there (laughs) because i'm thinking like if i was anywhere else lord knows what would have happened and and even um (laughs) and i'm an educator so even being able to be in the classroom and, and talk to my students like yo i need to take this call real quick and being able to do what needed to be done and be open to with them and be transparent yeah. um, in that process. And they were, you know, well, how's everything going? And, you know, this, that, and the other. So um, after it just, it just became touch and go. Um, we did end up putting her in a nursing home, which was by far one of the things I did not want to do. Y'all. I didn't want to, <laughs> did yeah. not want to do it. That was not my thing I wanted to do. Um, so we got a location, got her there. Um, and of course, the main thing is we just wanted to make sure she was being taken care of yeah. um, the correct way. And so um, when, you know, luckily she had family or we had family that um, would go consistently, taking time to go consistently to check in to call to update you know video call i think i video call so much man i don't know how many (laughs) i video call all the time and i almost daily seem like uh or every other day um and there was really no i mean you know it was kind of like do you know who i am Mm -hmm. but do you know this person do you know that person so it was really she knew who i was but if you ask anybody else kind of really didn't know yeah um even in in the vacation uh we end up doing another vacation and having to go um down and we went to see her and even with that um she still knew she knew who i was 
Yeah. Um, she knew who the girls were. This man would move. <laughs> she would be following him. <laughs> you looking for him? He would be off on the corner and he would have to stick his head around the corner just so she can see. But she couldn't verbalize exactly what she wanted. And so as time yeah. progressed with that, that got worse and worse. Um, and she really wasn't swallowing. She really wasn't doing anything. Um, physical therapy was not helping. All of the therapies that they were doing, she wasn't doing nothing. Um like any all of the progress they were looking for her to make and there were and the crazy part was there's really no excuse as to why no one really could know like we still didn't know and still to this day really don't know if the tumor was cancerous we don't know that yeah. we don't know we know that it was a nice size and that it really wasn't growing but we really couldn't do anything else because we couldn't do chemo we couldn't do those things as preventative so we just kind of had to ride it out and in the riding out was it was a decline more and more so as we saw her declining um you know she couldn't eat so that's the feeding tube um and these are things where i'm struggling because i'm like okay i know she don't want this thing i know i know she don't want this this stupid tube and she kept taking the tube out she, did. she was doing whatever she could to call like clogging too but whatever because she didn't want it and i understood that and so um it just became a, a thing of like grandma you know talking to her and getting the nonverbal signals are you tired okay if you're tired i get it i'm okay don't wait whatever you need to do like having the tough conversations and letting her know that it was okay because you know i'm not the only grandchild but i'm the first i'm the oldest um, and the one that, you know, I, we spent all the time and talked all yes. the time. That's right. Um, and so it was just that thing. And so I would sing and she would go to sleep. I would call some days. She wouldn't talk to me and she wouldn't talk. So I would just sing. She would close her eyes. Uh, and I would sing. Um, Remember the Titans is my favorite movie. I don't know if you knew that. But Remember the Titans is one of my favorite movies. So I would always sing. Uh well that is too but when we talk about sing songy like i like that so the you know ain't no mountain high enough ain't no so i was saying that song to her um and that was just the song i was saying and then sometimes she would be trying to sing it with me and then sometimes we would have amazing days where she would share a word mm -hmm. um or she would say what <laughs> like you hear me talking to you what and that would be all that i would get but it was just in that time of, okay, well, I got something. Then it became just a look. And then um, my aunt would describe that she would she would be trying to touch my face on the phone. Or she would take the phone and she would, like, put me under the, <laughs> put me under the cover with her. So it was, like, those things of where it was, um, I think, her even processing in the state that she was in as much as she could. Yeah. Um, so and then um, she started doing the well, she was going through the transition anyway. And so as she was transitioning, it was just different phases. And then we finally got to the phase of um, her reaching and her saying she wanted her mom, her talking to relatives that were deceased. And um, I, you know, and all I could do is just screen record because I mean, I. Some people may call it creepy, but I thought it was the coolest thing ever to be able to see just the fluidity and the movement and the like the serene and like her skin had like was so clear. Yeah. So was. like in those last, you know, and then, you know, we, you know, I was like, grandma, you want another baby, grandbaby? Yeah. What you want? Boy. OK, girl or boy. Like we gave options. And so it's. <laughs> give people options all right grandma we we gonna try it in all right um but you know giving her options and just letting her know that hey you're still here we're still talking to you and so in that um even getting to that phase of her so close to transition it was still hey i have people that were either students or people that were also dealing with a transition of a loved one that they were very close to so in that time 
I was able to say, hey, I, I understand that. When before, like, I didn't understand. Like, oh, well, we dealing with a nurse home. Oh, gosh, I understand that. Are we dealing with, uh, yeah, I'd get that. So it was being able to have people that I was able to bond with that were also going through some things. And we just kind of share and leaning. So even in that um, leading up to that loss, I was it was still a win. And that's why I said it just kind of depends on how you look at it. Well, we'll discuss that later on how we okay. looked at it. But I do want to talk about um, we did, in the midst of everything, begin to try. We did. We did, you know. Um, <laughs> we gave it our all. Oh, yeah, Jesus be a fan. <laughs> um, <laughs> so sad. Yeah, we tried for a baby, and actually, she did get uh, pregnant. Yeah, and yeah, that so. was yeah, and it was crazy. This was around about that same time. Yeah, too. this was this was like Aprilish May. This was like April May ish. April no, it was April actually because it was testing season, and um, I just wasn't feeling good, and I just was over it. <laughs> and so took test positive, went through that whole little phase. Yeah. Had to wait to do doctor, you know, the whole preliminary when you're dealing with all of those things mm -hmm. um and so we did that and then i think i did an actual test ultrasound confirm and then we kept quiet like we didn't tell nobody yeah, well the, well well okay told a few okay well he was telling people the only people that i told were people that i worked with because of the concern they were really concerned that either one something worse was going on because they knew the stress i was carrying and so that was, you know. And some people just look at you and say, "What's going on? What's going on?" Like, right. Let me just tell you. Let me just, yeah. Just and you. so, but I mean, but in the very beginning, we didn't say anything. Like we told certain people, and then we kind of like let it, you know, we were quiet. Yeah. You know, you know how you. I mean, most women first trimester, you're kind of quiet. You don't really want to share because it's still kind of, you know, it's early iffy. Stages, yeah, it's still yeah. early stages. You don't know. So. um we were what eight weeks six weeks eight, eight weeks close to eight weeks i think it was no i yeah it was eight technically eight weeks but it was showing six weeks and because of what it was showing i was like okay i need to get an actual ultrasound for mm -hmm. um and do a actual follow-up with an ob and did and then that's and i did that <laughs> but that didn't come until yeah because got it back up so we did that first ultrasound and then uh what a week and a half later told uh, i was like Gigi, guess what yeah <laughs> Gigi, guess what it's like Gigi, i'm pregnant I said Gigi. She's and she was talking that day. She was talking. I she got I got the video on that. Talking, she was full on talking, big cheese on her face, smiling. We laughing, and she was talking, talking. And um, that lady, I said, um, I said, I'm gonna get that baby. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you that baby. I said that baby. Now I'm rock that baby to sleep. <laughs> I said I bet you are. And literally, what a week passes. And then we get the phone call. Yeah. That she had passed. And it was kind of like, what? Crazy. Literally. Like, it was really the last week of school. End of the... It was like, last week of school. It wasn't even really a full week that had passed. Maybe it was a full week that had passed. And then Nicole's birthday. Yeah. Like, we had... Like, everything, Boom everything right there together and so it's kind of like okay and then you know it it was um it was just bittersweet like it was and i think the people there was like they didn't know they didn't they couldn't understand what because she was talking to everybody <laughs> they said she was like full out just like talking mm -hmm. i think the lady who uh we went to go we went up there she was yeah. like she she was literally just talking to she me. was just talking to me Yep. And then when she came back, is that she was uh she was gone. Yep. Then. She was gone. So it, you know, it 
uh even and even her roommate <laughs> yeah which she was sweet though she was yeah. e- even even with her feisty yeah she was feisty she was Jamaican yeah, something. She was straight Jamaican. She was either from the islands or she, she was, was from the New York area and Ooh. had got here. But she was, yeah, yeah, she was, she was a little feisty. But even she said she was like, she's, she was quiet. She's like, we were talking and we were doing this, and she's like, that's my friend, and so that's kind of how we knew that in those last days, like she had that last burst. Yeah. From that time. So we say like those last couple of weeks. And so, um, you know, we were we we had great. I mean, just we still had great people because I knew nothing about any of this stuff. Um, Knew nothing about any place in Jacksonville for funeral homes. And a nurse actually wrecked up one of the nurses. He called back and he said, "Okay, how about this? And I'm like, "Okay." And the places like I was looking, it was just. Yeah. I was just trying to get there and he gave me all it. We use these people. My mom passed. We use this person and he just gave me all the information. And I'm like, okay, they're going to call you. Okay. Like yeah, set it, good. like set it all up. And that was the thing is she left a lasting impression for the people that work with her, you know, that hovered around her in those last moments. Um, and I mean, everybody was just, I think, just blown away because even the neurosurgeon, yeah. he was just like, What? She, like, and I think with, with her ending life literally described who she is, mm-hmm. she just left an uh, impression yep. on a lot of people, like so. just in that short amount of time of just being there. Mm-hmm. They were all day, I mean, they were talking like they were just like so devastated yep. that this had happened. You know, because they were looking for her to turn too. Yep, everybody was looking for everybody, her. Everybody, I mean, everybody was, was looking for her to make that turn, and yeah. so and I think yeah. that was the most devastating thing that people were looking for her to actually fully make that turn mm-hmm. and be who Gigi is. Yeah, like she rebounds. She rebounds quick. <laughs> yeah. So I think after that, that's when we found out. Yeah, and so we were. Uh, that was oh we spent that whole week um we did <laughs> spent the whole week with family just trying to get everything together let everybody know what was going on it was a whole week of a whole lot of firsts uh and i don't want to do that no time soon uh, <laughs> i mean and i think when it we, when we went up there found out all that stuff but then I think to see you have to deliver all this bad news. Yeah. Like, yeah. That within itself. Yeah. Like you're trying to. Yeah. That. I think that was the knowing no on the road, knowing what's going on and knowing I have to make those phone calls. Yeah. Like knowing I got to make the phone calls, knowing I got to also set up everything else, too. Mm hmm. Well, really not knowing it then, but having an idea like, okay, what's in order? What do I even start? And I think the most difficult thing was getting there, not really even having time to breathe and then having to deliver the news. Yeah. And what do you, you know, and just the different reactions. That's the. That's what I want to say. Like the people's different reactions. It, like I understand like well i don't fully understand but i never want to be that person to tell somebody hey that your loved one is gone it was all it was so many different reactions i know just it's like what you do and that's on top of trying to keep yourself together yeah in a mess because it was like who do you do you who do you video and then who do you call like who do you only voice call who do you video and that was the thing. I was having to do both. I yeah. was video calling and I was voice calling. And then it was like, okay, now who's where, when, how, what people I need to, the other people that I had on, you know, that she was friends with for like lifelong friends and also having to deliver like, hey, now your lifelong friend, 
you know you've been wanting to talk to your yeah. lifelong friend and haven't and that was i think that was the that was the worst part of it is the worst part of it is you we couldn't talk to her to see how she felt right we couldn't talk to her to get an idea of anything because she wasn't talking she wasn't wasn't talking like she was not. so that was that that was the thing of just having to deliver the news like i don't want to have to do that like, I mean, uh, if there's a different way to do it i don't think there's a different way to do it but i just think that but everybody's not built for that type of like stuff. so having to do that and then turn around and knowing okay now i gotta get these arrangements together what so went through the arrangements. <laughs> went through the arrangements. Uh, setting everything. Lady, ladies were amazing. The they place were, were. Oh my god! Truly awesome. Like and one thing about me in the midst of all of this, I want you to notice one why? thing about me. Like I'm gonna stay with the jokes. Yeah. Because I believe you know, laughter is such a a a, a great medicine, and. I I know God has gifted me as far as with making people smile, yeah, and making people well, not making people, but taking people out of that element of sadness for that time. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll be there dormanting for a while, and like you would never have nothing to break that. You need something in the middle that helps you break that type of stuff so you can have time to really breathe and assess and just basically come up for air because yeah. you got to understand you just been hit with a blow that you lost. Not to me, I say the glue mm -hmm. to the family. Oh yeah. And when that glue is gone, it's do? difficult for people to manage and hang on, mm -hmm. you know? So I was, I was jokingly, but I wasn't over jokingly. You know, some people can over joke and just be like, okay, that's mm -hmm. enough. Too far. Too you far. Know, Come back. Come back. I have a science to uh, my, uh, I, I, I would say comedic role. And I, I believe that it's just, to me, it's it's being spirit led, even when you're, you're funny as far as different other stuff. But the arrangements were set up. The place where we went to had me even thinking differently about like the end of life right because the whole process um with everything the way they just laid out like i've gone to funeral homes before but there was nothing like this place yeah and, and we'll put them in the description and they're not paying us for this no. but we'll still put them in the description and they are i think there were i want to say they're worldwide too like that they are um like it's a franchise yeah. basically and i think a lot of times people choose what's local mm -hmm. but this place being that they handle everything the catering the food you could do the catering there the funeral there I, it, uh, like everything and it, when you walk in it doesn't look like a funeral like it didn't look it like not. like i'm i'm looking for one like with a casket room and that i don't want to see like because yeah. i've been in a place you got to walk yeah. around <laughs> yeah yeah or like there was no there were no um no viewings like there was a ceremony i think they were getting set up but like even that was probably the most elegant thing i've ever seen they were so respectful yeah like, very very so um they made the whole process very very easy um and yeah you did you stayed with the jokes you stayed to make sure i was eating and, and different things like that um and then even it though was, she was you know going through a lot and i know she was taking on a lot being pregnant mm -hmm. at that time and, and 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 still trying to manage not only her emotions uh your people emotions mm -hmm. and i think it was more so making sure everybody else was good right in the midst of everything yeah so i think with all of that that showed your strength as far as in that moment whether you yeah. think it is or not <laughs> you know but yeah so we i mean but we we 
did all of that and then i think it was like we were getting ready to come back and it was like that friday saturday and i'm like it was that friday and i'm like eh, i don't feel the best yeah and um you know so it was kind of like you know you like just rest you know until you just like rest you know chill out relax and i'm just like eh, i don't know it's just some name something don't feel right is all i know like in my mind i thought the worst but i dare not speak the worst mm-hmm. and um i think that's when we were getting on the road and coming back that saturday and i just i was uncomfortable that like that was probably the most uncomfortable ride ever um and then um i think sunday no saturday i that was when um we made it home and you made me just sit like you just made me sit down because i was like bad i was like i'm spotting and you said just sit just sit down you did a lot just sit down and so i just sat on the recliner with my blanket and (laughs) sat on the recliner really didn't do much and then um i'm trying to think at what point did i call i remember calling the after hours number for the doctor the new doctor but i don't remember i remember what day that was like all that's like cloudy and i remember her saying well you can either go to the er if you're that concerned or you can just wait till your appointment i was like look i guess i'll just wait it out and then sunday you were at church and you i remember telling you again all right but it started again and you were just like just come on to church and so i remember sitting in church like okay and so didn't really i think i told i think i told mom mm-hmm. i think i think I don't even remember, but I remember just saying, okay, hold out till you get to the appointment Tuesday. Like that was in my mind. Like, okay, hold on. But still again, I felt, but I dare not speak. Right. Because the one thing that the, I think the unspoken thing that I hadn't, I had said to myself, but had never said to you is one of my fears was losing a child because so many people i was like one of my fears is actually losing a child and it didn't matter at what stage but that was just one of the things that i feared the most and then it was kind of like okay and so i just kind of what i I think i you had me be easy the whole time um and then you know i we had people praying from my co-workers to people that were in our circle um and then it was kind of like um i didn't really want to share like i didn't want to get no more bad news <laughs> i did i was done everything else. i was done giving bad news so like i would delegate like i had a person to text hey can you tell tell everybody like okay this is what happened all right and then <laughs> like, didn't have an informed. i had like and i just didn't want to have i did not want to be the person to have to keep delivering bad news i wanted to say it one time and then that one part please you just share it here i didn't want to have to send multiple um and then so we got to the doctor was that that was that tuesday mm-hmm. and um like it was just weird and like the lady she came in she's like are you sure you were who told you you were and so but laying on the table i already knew like i didn't even see what i saw prior to all of everything else like i didn't i didn't see it and so when the girl had the you know of course like in the outside room the big screen you could see and so the way she was looking i was like it ain't even there no more she looked puzzled she looked puzzled i already knew i already knew what it was but i dare not (laughs) i dare not say it and so um when the actual doctor was like well who told you that and where were you and like asking all these questions i'm like did you hear a heartbeat did you because i'm like there's no heartbeat and she turned the sound off the thing like th- like i already knew and so it was kind of like eh. 
And I'm like, yes, I'm like, yes, ma'am, I heard a heartbeat. And yes, ma'am, I have the ultrasound. And this is what they told me. And yes, I have paper. And like, I had all of the things, but didn't think to take it to the doctor. I didn't think to take it to the doctor with me. That was, and so I told her, I was like, like, yes. Yeah, it was a whole lot going on. And I'm like, and so she said, well, this is what's going on. And she was like, you are an active miscarriage. Yeah. And it was like. You got to, and it was literally a week. Like Gigi passed on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday, we found out we were in active miscarriage. Like what the? So again, didn't want to send that message. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, I'm gonna now need you to tell everybody. So yeah, and I think it's good to um. It it was tough. I, like man, the it was road. Like two, it was two losses a week apart. So I think for me, like I, I like when it comes to children, I, I, I'm 100 percent from the free throw line. I have five children. You got five children. You do. <laughs> you got five kids. And I'm 100 percent from the free throw line. So when this took place at this point. At this moment, I didn't feel like Superman. Like, I didn't feel like Superman at all. Like, I felt like a blow that I've never experienced before. Like, I've had hurt. I've had pains. I've had difficult times. Yeah. But this was an indescribable pain that... I had no answers for. Yeah. Because it didn't, like, I don't know what I expected. Like, it didn't end there. (laughs) And then, like, you know, it wasn't like you got a whole manual of what was to come. Because everybody's is different. Yeah. And that was the thing. And it was just like, if you need anything, call us. Take Tylenol, Motrin, whatever. They just send you on your way. And they, I mean, she was very, I mean, like, she was concerned. She knew, like, and she was like, whatever. She was shocked, too, to a point where she had so much sympathy. Like, it was just, oh, my gosh. Like, um. Because that's, like, and it was just the questions. And I'm sitting up here like, man, I'm, like, I ain't crazy. And then I think in that moment, you're, like, free throw line. And I'm up here. I'm angry because I'm, like. I was told, don't go there. Just go ahead and make your appointment to OB. And I'm like, well, let me just go here first. Like, and then, you know, and so, like, I was angry because I'm like, uh, if I would have gone to the OB versus, you know, my my just regular gynecologist at that time, they pro- they would have saw mm-hmm. that something was off just from measurement terms. Gotcha. Because then it was a whole two weeks from, or actually a little bit longer than that, from that time, from the time we got the the first ultrasound. Yeah, it was about three, almost three weeks, almost three weeks later, because I would have been getting ready to head into second trimester. But basically what it appeared is something had happened early on. So I was supposed to be at eight weeks. However, I was already, I was measuring like two weeks behind. Mm -hmm. So I was measuring two weeks behind. And so something already was going on. Um, And so it was kind of like, we were just asking the questions of, well, what could it be? And, you know, and, you know, she gave, I mean, the most honest answer I think is something probably happened and your body just rejected it. So, you know, so it was kind of like weighing all the, the answers and the questions being asked and it was like what do you what do you do now like what do you do next like what's next because again this was pro- this was the only baby that we had actually shared early on with everybody like hey we're expecting yeah. and it was i think too i think it was just we were looking for the joy in the midst of what was going on too yeah with you know, with everything with Gigi. And I think I know a lot of times we don't like it as humans. 
change or or having I think we paint things we paint a picture like we paint a picture ourselves mm-hmm. but then there's real life pictures <laughs> <Right>. like <laughs> the ones we can't see yeah and I always seen my son like I always like seeing Luca that's that 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 that's our child's name so if you ever uh see us with shirts on about mm. you know uh we have our theme colors and different other stuff for him it, it, it people like and people may ask or may think how do you think think or know that it is a boy um i just know yeah and to to go through that 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 turmoil in my life and i think it, as 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 men and if i can talk candidly to 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 the men about your surroundings and not being afraid to show emotions Mm -hmm. and not you know it took me a while to it took me a while to even admit like okay yeah you lost a child Mm -hmm. i think that 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 idea and really trying to find the support like finding the support of it yeah because you don't know who you could be vulnerable with because in our culture and we we talked about this in our culture it's such a taboo thing nobody talks about it. everybody's hush hush about it but then the other cultures like their support you know and so i think for me in that time it was difficult to admit yeah and then having for me having to then go back to school because i it was it was that time it was okay gather yourself together get to school and then everybody knowing and you not really wanting because they don't know what to say so it was like having to face that and be like, no, it's really okay. But then on top of that, having people to say, you know what, well, I went through the same thing. So I get it. I understand where you're coming from. And that was like really the first thing that I felt going back. It was like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. But, hey, you know, I, I went through that same thing because you discovered a lot in yeah i discovered so much of <laughs> about your so circle much, that which, yeah which makes this which, which makes sense um because the things that are kept quiet that mm-hmm. we don't even share and, and i always talk about vulnerability being our superpower but the moment you said okay listen i've lost a child mm-hmm it was people that came out the woodwork said, "Oh yeah, I lost a child." I'm like, "Hold on, we've been knowing each other yeah. for it was a people while." That, yeah, and, and then it was you know, just people we also too like. I didn't we or we didn't connect on a certain level, but when they shared, that was like the yeah. common bond, or they knew of somebody, or I don't know, I don't know what to say in this moment to you, but you know, I'm sorry. I've never experienced that, but I know somebody that has. So we had a like there was the the outpouring um, was amazing. It's still amazing. Like in in that instance, um, and I always say I'm I'm very blessed to be where I work um, because the camaraderie around me in that time, and even still now when I you know because we have moments. And yeah. even with that and just saying, you know, well, how y'all doing? Okay, well, you know, it's not, it wasn't always about Tiff. How's Mo doing? How is Mo handling that? And I think that was the thing is what we did is we did not turn outward to everybody else. We really had to learn to turn inward because we went through all of that in, in, such a short amount of time but it didn't end there because then we had to go through the full miscarriage process yeah we did and that in its own yeah that that in itself yeah i was done um it's a wrap call it whatever you want to call it but it was for it was 
for me like that was child, for me it was childbirth all over again i know everybody's experience is different but it was literally contractions it, it wasn't just basic cramps how people like oh, it was crap no it was front back contract it was it was probably the worst thing that i can ever experience coming from somebody who actually was what five centimeters dilated with one no three centimeters dilated with one or was i five i think i was five with nicole three with rye it wouldn't count i was just ready like i was like and this was no remember this was active this this was before scheduled c-sections though so like i i experience those pains and i know what contract and that's what that was for me and so it was kind of like they didn't take you you know and my poor mama my that's a hard my poor mama and some other people they didn't they didn't make you just do this they should have just did that but i was reading so much on the negative effects of the procedures and having to do that and people having the procedure and still having to go in and go back in because something was yeah. left so i our prayer then became is God, we've lost this baby, but Lord, please let everything that is supposed to, you know, relieve, release itself afterwards. Please let all of my body do what it's supposed to do and design to do to push all of that stuff out to not then have the surgery. Because that was where we were then. We went from. Yeah, we want to do all that. And then. Yeah. Well. On top. I don't want to say we. <laughs> I, I don't want so so to be like, what he mean we? Listen, what I'm saying is because I didn't want her to do all of that and then have to go have the procedure. No, it too. was it was we because of the I mean, I don't care what they say, but it was uh, it's our podcast. We said we wanna say. But is is we it was we <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started. Man. Hey, come hey, you better not come for my husband. <laughs> Um, but it was we because in those moments, even though you felt as though there was nothing you could do, because I was taking the pills, I was taking pain pills, it wouldn't work, nothing Man, was working. It was crazy. Um, even in those moments, the the things that you could do, you did it. The pain that I did endure, it wasn't like you got up and walked out the room. No, you if I'm up and I'm trying to do whatever, you were there. You know, and and even our baby girl was, you know, she was there. So it's like everybody pretty much as our family, we all, we Man. went through that together. Yeah, we, we, one thing I can say about our family is that we did pull together. And I'm we just did. Going, that, that's just a little bit of the wins. Yeah. And we'll get to that later. Um, but in that time when you were actually going through that whole you know, passing the whole thing. And, um, it's crazy. And I was just like, man, just asking God for wisdom and, and help, you know, because it's different to lose a child, but it's also different to see your wife suffering in pain. Mm hmm. It's a different feel. Like no meds can 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 you know ease the pain or do anything like that. Only thing you can do is be there, rub where you need as far as like your back or mm -hmm. different other stuff like that, and pray. That's it. And that's and and to me, a lot of people will probably see that as limitations, but for me, it's like, if, you know, mom always taught me it, it when you stick your hand out in front of you and you mm. can't control it, if it's beyond your, if it's beyond your hands, then it's, it's God's business. Yeah. And for me, I just literally begin to make it God's business. Yeah. And even though I would, you know, I, as men, we want to put the cape on and say, hey, you there's know, no mm -hmm. there, 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 there is no cape for this. And the, well, there is a cape, but, but the cape yeah. would have to be prayer. Yeah. Because beyond that, 
it's out of your control. And I think once you recognize that and realize that, it mm-hmm. makes things a lot easier because the weight is not for us anyway. Yeah. It's never for us. Yeah. So as head of the house, it, it, it as people say, it hit different. Yeah. Because it was that thing of, I, I and, and then you're head of the house, but then from my standpoint is I didn't want you subjected to see what I was having to, like you saw the physical pain, but to see the other parts of it, it was like, okay, there was a, there was a line where it was kind of like, I'm not going to let him see that. It's privacy. Like, I'm not going to like, so it was, it was still having that private moment but then having the personable moment, like you said, of, you know, you rubbing my back, you, you know, holding my hand, you just, you know, trying to do the comforting thing and then still just being there and being nurturing and making sure the house was upkept because in that in that process. And like I said, you know, everybody's process is different in that process. I really couldn't do a whole lot. It was literally like. I had to allow my body to do what my body did. And I literally sat yeah. <laughs> in one spot. I, I sat like this, my blanket in on a recliner. <laughs> that was really all that I could do. And, um, you know, you're praying for those things. And my prayer is, you know, I didn't want to be one of those women where, you know, some women hemorrhage because I, I made the, I made the mistake for me, for me being the overthinker, me being the overanalyzer, me doing all of those things, um, because that's just how my mind is. I made the decision because I was seeking out a community of people to understand what I was going through. Like in the process of, okay, am I done? Am I not done? Like that's kind of where I was. Am I done? Was I... And so I joined a community um, on social media. Now, it was very good for the questions. It was very good for that process. But then um, I did not detach myself from it because I was still looking for, um, I guess you said, connection. And so what I ended up seeing and learn, I ended up learning probably more about people, but what I ended up seeing and realizing that for me to be, um, a woman of faith, um, a lot of the emotions that some of these mothers go through because they are trying and some of them are having multiple miscarriage like this isn't a thing of just one and their first one they've had multiple or you know so it was kind of like i saw the good the bad and the real nasty i can't even call it ugly the nasty of how some of that played out Mm -hmm. um and i was just like i don't want to be that and then it was crazy because right after i lost the baby two cousins (laughs) ended up pregnant and it was kind of like, man, but you like, and then I remember, and then somebody else was actually pregnant around the same time that I knew that had a miscarriage, I think right before, like right before us or it, a year before us or something like that. And I just remember saying, I didn't want to be a bitter woman to where I could not celebrate others. Mm-hmm. Like it was like, Lord, I don't want to be bitter. I'm not bitter. Like, but there were just limits that I had. I could not go and the baby out i could not you know there were just certain things where i had to shield myself but if i was on social media and someone posted that they were expecting i'm going to congratulate them i'm not going to be and so that was the thing that i learned and so i had to really pull back and so it was like a win finding the group but then it was a loss because the people that i was connecting with like it was more harm than it was good then also, um, after the whole ordeal was over, you passed it, and I believe, yeah, I believe we, we went back to make sure everything was good, right? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So we went back and she was just like, yep, everything's gone. And, and I so. believe, uh, I think it was probably like two or three, maybe two, two weeks after that. Um, we ended up where I work at. We ended up having a job that I had to deliver. Oh, food that you had to deliver the food to, to that, that same, same spot, spot, the exact same doctor's office. To that same doctor's office, and I news. kept it real with myself. I kept it like I'm one of those. I'm what I. I am literally one of those men that be like, if I can't take it, I will not do it. And we pulled up, and. To me, it was like a flashback of everything that that had just happened, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I told my uh, my my bro, I was like, man, I can't do it. You got to take the food in, and thank God he was there, because I think, because when he went in and took the food in, I immediately just began to break down. I began to cry because. I don't want to be one of these men out here that suffer in silence mm -hmm. and and don't really deal with the emotions that we have. Like, I think a lot of times we're built to be machines or as machines to not feel. And I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be that type of person. If if I am hurting, yes, I'm hurting. I'm going to admit that I'm hurting. Mm -hmm. If if I'm sad, I'm going to admit that I'm sad. If I'm going through, I'm going to admit that I'm going through. And it's okay to be there. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay to be human. And I think we we have been taught as men to not feel human emotions right. which is laughter you know cry be angry you know mm -hmm. but sin not <laughs> but and i think that's why a lot of times we the house is in such a disarray because the man is not dealing with his true inner pain yeah and this is from like nine times out of ten childhood type stuff but that's a whole different podcast yeah. um, but i think like in that process too um it just taught i mean it, it taught a whole lot because even like in that you know in that group you know you had people saying well my husband's not doing x y and z and it was like me being able to provide and i guess that going into like the wins kind of but me being able to provide you know to certain women and saying hey you know, just because he's doing it this way doesn't mean that he's not grieving. And that was one of the things that I had to understand is that your outwardness and my outwardness was it wasn't going to look the same, but we were still processing the emotions together. And that's the one thing that I can say is throughout that whole time, we process the emotions together. Yeah. You know, I know, you know, you was crying. You did say, okay, I broke down. I couldn't go in there. Okay. Now I understand that you're processing this thing just like I am. It may not be an everyday thing. And um, the thing is, it, it's an everyday thing. Well, no, I'm just saying it. No, I'm not saying it's not for you. I'm just saying it may, for some people, it may not yeah, be. Yeah, but what I'm saying yeah. is that, because I, I think I've heard a lot of people say, hey, listen, the woman really gonna suffer, you know, and I think it takes the 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 power of being emotion emotional out of the man's hands. But I don't think I mean maybe it was maybe we were prepped for this because I went through, but the hardest part was the miscarriage process. It, it wasn't the rebound of having to deal with the emotions, but it was, I mean, yeah, I was upset of, of the, okay, well, why this? But I think the one thing that stuck out in my mind was my grandma said, I'm going to get that baby and I'm going to that baby to sleep. Mm -hmm. She was all about her grandkids and yes. her great grands. You know, it's two grand, two grandkids, but she was really all about her great grands. That was the thing that, her wish was she left Virginia, she moved here, 
she got time with her great grands. Yeah. And that was what she wanted. So to have another great grand come into the world that she would not see, she would not be around, like couldn't hold, couldn't buy stuff and sport. Like mm. to I think that was the thing that I kept going back to is when my grandma said she was going to take the baby and rock the baby sleep. So she literally just went <laughs> like that was in my mindset. The thing that kind of kept me, I think, from just, oh, she going to go through. Oh, it's just miserable. But like I said, I didn't have a woe is me attitude about it. Yes, there were hard days. There were emotional days. There were days where I just wanted to walk down the stupid baby aisle because it was the quickest way to cut through <laughs> to get to another area in the store. But having to, one, go all around the store or not knowing the store's layout. Oh, yeah. and having to go eight like those are the those are the things is knowing okay there's still going to be triggers and then starting school and the first thing i found out is that there is a co-worker of mine who is having complications in her pregnancy oh, yeah. <laughs> like it was kind of like full circle for me and i think that was why i never went into that Oh, the woman going to go through. Yeah, okay, I went through. I went through when I was trying to pass that that thing. <laughs> it's just like that for me was the hardest part. The other parts, and it could just be our circle. It, it could be the fact that we literally had we do a very too. solid circle. And it's combined. It's a combined circle. We have our church family. I have people that I'm very connected to and close to of the faith that I work with. And so I think I had, you know, cousins like we had a very tight circle and to the point. So people saying, all right, you're going to have to find you something to remember and memorialize and do this. And this might sound crazy, but you might want to do this and this. And so then it became, okay, instead of just saying we lost the baby. Okay. Now we got to, let's speak his name. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's Luca. Let's speak. Like, let's talk about it in the house. And so like, that's what we, I think we became and once we actually put a name and put actions to it, then it became, OK, now it's a little bit easier to deal with. Because the last time we got hit hard like that was another bag to bed loss when we lost Sissy and my aunt. Yeah. That was the last time that we had had a a double whammy back to back. And so also, I, I, I want to go back to not being able to walk down the aisles. Yeah, I still ain't. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm still not there yet. And yeah. still yet struggle with that. And the crazy part, I would be like, nah, I'm not ready for that yet. Yeah. Definitely not ready it's for that. It's just the um, it's the admitting. Some day, and some days I can do it and some days I can't. And I think you 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 have to ride the process out. Yeah. And it's nothing you can, you Sorry, know. I'm checking the girls. It is nothing you can really rush along. Right. And I didn't want to put so much like in the morning, like for me in the morning time, I will always, you know, kind of, I will say Lego myself, break myself down before I actually step out of the bed. I'm like, okay, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Okay. God, uh, uh, I have my time with God in the morning and while I'm having that time, I'm breaking myself down. What emotions did we wake up with today? Like what? And that's a daily routine for me because it's something I have to do because I feel like if I don't do that, then I'll be off center. And I think a lot of times we are before my feet hit the floor. Number one, I'm talking to God. Because, number one, I don't trust myself and my decisions. Mm -hmm. So I need these guidance. So I'm breaking myself down. Okay, what, what are we dealing? What are we feeling right now? 
And if we're feeling those things, if you're feeling sad, you're feeling angry, have those moments right now. Because when you step down That's it. off of this bed, <laughs> life has to keep moving. Right. And I can't go into different places with my me or oh my type of stuff. Yeah. Because if you pay attention, this life is not really about us. Yeah. And I think, too, part of that is... Like, there were some days where I'm like, I, ain't got to, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like cracking the Bible. I don't feel like, like, just let me get, let me get up. Let me get through the day and let me come back home. And I can, then I can woo side and I could do all of the things. So, like, whereas you were, before I hit the floor, I need to assess. Me, let me just get this day over with. Let me, I'm already in this moment. Now, let me just get through it. Cool. And so, it's still the process because like i said some days just hit harder than others um you know and especially being around kids and parents who have new babies so it was like all of the it's like all of the things because i just had to be very sensitive with like i said with triggers i had to be very open with and vulnerable that hey this mama just showed up with this cute little baby and i just Mm -hmm. can't like I cannot um and that was the thing of really trying to understand where I was in the process and then once the I call it it's the school baby that's what we call it (laughs) the school baby was born and that mom has allowed me to kind of relish in watching this baby grow it is kind of like okay so it's having moments of having the fix. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure mamas that have lost babies, you know, you get your fix. So having the fix and but then also too, embracing and understanding that it is still OK to celebrate others in their wins, even if you are in a loss. OK, we talked a lot about these losses. losses. Um. I would tell those who lost to go through the process. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is. Um, At first, I never understood when um, like older people, older, older, I I would say older saints would say uh, trouble don't last always Mm -hmm. or joy come in the morning. You know, stuff right. like that. Like what? Like I never understood. I'm just like, you, uh, what you mean it's coming in the morning? I need to come now. Ha! <laughs> I need joy now. I, I'm not trying to wait till the morning. Can you just give me somebody named Joy, please? <laughs> so, but I understand it now. I mean, um, I, like my thing is always th- this too shall pass. No matter what it is, it will pass. It will yeah. pass. I would say whatever the 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 loss is, go through it. Yeah, go through it because it's it's kind of like when we um when we went through that storm we was driving, and the thing of it, the you're gonna have highs and lows, but it doesn't matter if you're at the high or the low, you're still gonna go through a storm. So, what do you learn from that in the process? Yeah. So I might be at a high, but that doesn't exempt me from being in a storm. I may be in a low. It doesn't exempt me from being in a storm. So wherever I am, where am I? Where's my focus? And am I looking for the lesson to be learned within that within that moment? And I think what we did um, is we were vulnerable with each other for one. And then we were vulnerable with our family. And that does include our kids, um, our seven-year-old and our nine-year-old. Um, you know, last year they were eight and six. <laughs> they are, and then, you know, they are the youngest of the group, but we still had to break it down. We still talk to them on their level because they needed to know this is what is going on. And, you know. It, it's funny because we have um, I found an organization that shipped out free bears for people uh, that had infant loss. So we've done a couple of things. And so it's funny because last uh, when you had when we had the bear, um, 
Nicole comes in. And she says, "Why did why did Daddy have the baby's bear yesterday?" Oh. So trying to explain, and I was like, "We were just doing a demonstration. What a demonstration about babies? No, child. A demonstration talking about. So like, our kids are very. They are aware." Of this was something that impacted our family. Our older kids, our boys, are aware that yeah. this is something that impacted our family. And so, what we did is it bound us together, and it created that win. Because just because you know they didn't see the, I don't even remember if I showed them the ultra, ultrasound pics of the baby, but just because they didn't see ultrasound pics or did or whatever, just because they weren't, they didn't grow up in Gigi's presence, the things that she gave and the nuggets that she gave them, um, it still left a huge impact. Um, and so when you're going through these things, it is very important to one, be vulnerable, and then two, find a close knit group of faith based friends. Okay, faith based in of the faith. Um, and like I said, for for me personally, there were very few people um, outside of a cousin who walked me through the process of child loss. But outside of that, in my immediate race, I didn't have anybody. So it was to my friends of other races that were able to connect and help me to process and help me to deal with that. So sometimes, you know, you may have. We got to debunk the let's be quiet and this is taboo, so we're not going to talk about it. No. We it is a subject that really does need to be discussed because one, it is there are women that are out there that need the correct guidance of how to deal with this thing. Um, there are men that because there were men in that group too that I was in, there are men in that group that are seeking. If there's a group for women, guess what? There need to be a group for men because the men still are going through it. And so yeah. this is, that's the thing where we learned that even though we had a tight circle, we knew that we still had to be able to turn inward to each other. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing is knowing what was a hard thing. So we didn't watch anything dealt with baby. We didn't watch anything that dealt with death. We didn't watch, like there is so much. <laughs> <laughs> there's so it, much it, we cut off a lot we cut off and we just spent that season of our lives really just kind of talking to each other yeah. and really trying to um help each other process we were also therapy too yeah and therapy we did yeah awesome. and so that was the thing is it was like, okay well let me get back into therapy because it, it ain't gonna work and uh um, and the proper therapy is it is is an extra, extra, extra added bonus to you recovering. Yeah. Um, I think in the whole process, I always, even though we lost Luca, I had to be present for the others. Yep. I, I, I made sure that I was present. As head of the household, you have to make sure you're present in the house. The loss, it, 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 it's one thing. Yeah. And, and, but when you got light skinned girls and my son here and, and, and mm -hmm. other people leaning on you, you have to, you have, like, it's a must. You and, must be there for them like that. Yeah. And it was days where I had, like, there were days I was disconnected. And then it became, okay, I got to be in this moment. There were days where I just, I could not bring myself to just do the day-to-day the -day task. Even some days, teaching was hard. Even some, like, even meetings. And it was kind of like, uh. But having people to pick up on that 
and to step in and fill in the gap. And that was something that you did very well and continue to do very well. Um, as we're on this road of just processing the grief, because, you know, this is it. it, ain't it. <laughs> this, we, st it we still it, grieve. Ain't it. We, we still, you know, we still are going process, through you know? the process and, um, just finding the best because there are tons of wins we lost Gigi we lost Luca but then our son our son moved with us we like lost our oldest Gigi, we also lost Luca and then just recently we lost a uh, Jimbo oh know? yeah so oh god that with the dog. itself man I mean you gotta understand <laughs> like and that was recently. That, yeah. that was the most recent that was loss. the most recent and one that within itself was tough that was a lot that um, was tough right there. Yeah, that was a lot. So even with all of those, you you look, um, you know, the, the winds are, our circle is still tight. As a family unit, it did bring us together um, closer. And we are able to still talk and laugh. And, you know, the kids keep thinking that we finna have another baby. You know, I keep telling them now. Nah, Ain't gonna happen. Um, we done. That's it. So uh, <laughs> the 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 wins though are, um, I would say, uh, it, it, it's so easy to talk about the wins because for me, waking up daily is a win. Oh yeah. You know, um, being in a happy marriage. Yeah. You know, it, it's different when you're in a marriage and your wife is sleepy. <laughs> Come on, I did good. I did. That was two. I've only so, had two the whole time. But it, it's 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 a different feel when you have a partner. And I always I talk to my uh, brother Rashad about uh, like Rashad J. Rashad J. How 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 much I just value my wife and like it's a different thing when when you all are stepping together. It's different when y'all walking together and y'all vision is on the same uh, path and y'all are not like mm. pulling in different directions. So it, I, I love my life and where it is right now. I love, um, I just love where I'm at. I mean, my son, I, we, we had two graduates this year. Dead. Come Jesus. on now. Like that. Two, that gra would, two graduates and. And one graduate graduated with my first class I taught. So you know what I'm saying. So it's it, it's re, it's rewards yeah. and the loss, man. Like yeah, you, lots like, of them. I mean, lots of them though. Like yeah. we we we're doing more at we're doing more at we want well we started out doing more anyway last year. Like that was the thing we so we did start out, but it it forced us to. Yeah. Because we weren't we weren't doing vacations often, but that forced us to do vacations. We, we which was all made, working, no play. We were all literally <laughs> all working, no play. And so now we've learned. We did, you know, when um, I have, you know, my days that I have off, it's we're together. We're having date day and, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing these things. We're maximizing that time that we have together as well as me relearning to be fully present as a wife and as a mother, because those things take away, you know, yeah. you get, you get those type of gut punches. Like you like, man, cool. and, and, you know, the wind of therapy, the wind of getting back into working out consistently. Yeah. Um, and just being able to just share, like it's a whole new found thing of and it's it even though it was, it was a double loss it is still a rewarding time yeah and so to watch it's crazy because i'm like dang man luca would be like what one <laughs> I know. like so watching those people that had babies right after we lost luca like yo they would have been the same age running around it's like not looking at it in a downing way or it doesn't bring depression or anything like that it's like man 
at least somebody gets a chance to rejoice in that. And so my joy comes from watching, you know, Julie and, and yeah. you know, with Drew and yeah. seeing him. And then I have another um friend that she had a baby and he has some complications but he's doing well and he's thriving like watching you know baby Dottie Faye <laughs> like seeing the fact of where she is now in the, in the swimming pool mm -hmm. so like it is those things that for me even though we had losses I find my wins living vicariously through these women who either one had complications to julie ain't want no more kids anyway she thought she was done and drew popped up but you know things like that and so that's where you have to embrace so even in child loss it is a very difficult thing it is very challenging in any loss but you have to find those joyous moments and those joyous occasions because and also you know uh even though we you know Luca, we lost Luca, but at the end of the day, we've gained Lil OG. Yeah, we uh, uh, all we, these other we, kids. We've gained Big Jesus. J. I mean, you're like we we gain. We, we are parents to a lot. We of gain kids. kids. We gain kids that we don't have to feed and clothe yeah, and house. You know, we just have to give them the nurturing. Thing, you know, um, <laughs> to be a father did. and just be like, hey, don't do this. Go ahead, we go did home. go, go home. home. We gonna uh, feed you, but go home. <laughs> like, but we we've gained a lot we have and just yeah you know really spending time with these kids um yeah. when we when we did fca yeah and you know our tag team uh big og stuff yeah you know, um really impacting these kids uh having kids come to christ in yeah the midst of, oh yeah uh, fca and yeah. you know like the win is to learn from the losses yep and you you can't take away the losses because you will never really appreciate the win. Right. You know, uh, I mean, they go together. I don't care what nobody said. You can't separate them. Right. You cannot separate. Life is 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 made, shaped, and formed off of wins mm -hmm. and off of losses. And it's, off it's of losses and off of wins. Yes. And it's what you do with it. Yeah. I mean, we we it could have broke us. It could have uh, broke us up. That's right. the crazy part. Yeah, because it was it was a very it was a very difficult thing, and I didn't want to share how I was. I didn't want to share the deep dark feelings that I was having in the process, um, because it's like man. But then you know, like you said, you got these children running around here, <laughs> so it's kind of like, what don't you do? And it made our kids more in tune and sensitive i think you know i could just be sitting and chilling and mommy are you okay mommy you good mommy what's wrong so it it made it showed the nurturing within our children as they are growing and understanding the whole life process yeah but it it really is about what you do with it like if it are you gonna wallow in it or are you gonna get up and you're gonna keep moving I, I i mean i like the scenario i use of you drop the ball are you gonna just kick it and then walk up to it and then bump it again with your foot or are you gonna pick the thing up and keep going so it in these moments is you know it, it was a fumble but we got it and we kept going so that we could at least score the touchdown or at yeah. least punt it for the field goal or reach close to the field. Okay, I don't know anybody know football, but I'm I'm talking a little bit. <laughs> I see. Um, but at least we did that, and because we did that, that opened up the avenues for other things. Because there were days where I didn't want to get up and go to work. There were days I didn't want to get up and, you know, having to cook grits for these kids all summer. <laughs> <laughs> But it just, you know, it opened up that door. And so I'm I'm grateful for I'm grateful for those wins. Yeah. So you we had losses, but when we look at it a year later, how many more wins have we had 
from those losses and not taking from them and not saying that we're still, you know, yeah. we are still grieving. We're still processing this whole thing. Every day is a new day. Um, but my goodness, what do you do? You take the loss, you flip it, you turn it into a win. And it's not an overnight thing. It is literally a moment by it's moment a by moment by moment. And you need the help. You need the circle. You need you need the vulnerability. Well, first you need Christ in your life, period. Mm -hmm. Then you need the vulnerability. Then you need, you know, the circle that will hold you accountable because it's easy to slide back into things that you might have done especially if you're a believer if you're a believer and you're walking in this you definitely want to make sure that you have a solid group if you're not a believer you still want to make sure that you have a solid group of people who are going to speak truth and pour into you but tell you when something is not right like we got we y'all know what i'm talking about so in those instances but for the people that are believers you really have to make sure you have someone to hold you accountable because it got bad oh. where if yeah and so we had to bind together to make sure because i i'll be honest people in our race didn't know what to say to us oh. so it was quiet so we needed each other so we could be vulnerable and say what needed to be said so we wouldn't slip back into something we had our friends that have gone through this that were checking in that making sure we're good cry if you need to cry do this whatever you need to do okay mo telling you the truth are you gonna listen to him ah. <laughs> so he's talking truth though, right man. so we had those things and because of that we can sit in front of you and say hey in life you're gonna have wins and you're gonna have losses but it's about what you do with them yeah um it's it's truly <laughs> rewarding because what you go through i guarantee you you'll be able to testify and tell somebody how to get mm -hmm. through what it's it's amazing how what we can see what what they are losses i don't want to take away from right. that but the lesson and the path that you can show people of how to tunnel through, to navigate like there navigate is like Google Maps, right? you know certain people who's built for that mm -hmm. like for miscarriages and, and, and dealing with stuff like that I'm like, we must be, we must be <laughs> built for it. We must be made because a lot of people are not made to go through that, right. survive and come out on top right. and still say, but God, yep. most people will fold in that instinct and blame God. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's like, man, you know something? It, it, it was tough. It, it was. was difficult. It, it, it was a challenging time was it? in our life. It set us back to the point where we had to reposition some things. Yeah. We like, like really rethink some things like, okay. But after we rethink, we came together, grouped together, got stronger and communicating and understanding each other. Yeah. We are now more closer than we've ever been as yeah. far as in our marriage right now. It's, I mean, and, and by far, not perfect. Just progressing. <laughs> progressing and, and moving the mark. That's what we... That's what this did. That's what this did. This did that and this allowed us to see that... It is important to take time with family. It is important to step away from work and enjoy um, each other. And that is the that's the thing is. Is everything peaches and cream? No. Is it pie in in the sky? No, it is not. It is not ice creams with sprinkles and cherries all the time. However, it can be if you make it that way. Yeah. It may not be the color sprinkles. But we might have some chocolate sprinkles on there. 
So it might not be bright, but we at least got some sprinkles mm -hmm. or it may be too sprinkles. So it, it really is how you look at it. And that's what we that's what this whole thing taught us is what is our perception, not only as individuals, but what is our perception as husband and wife? What is our perception as a uh, mother and father? Because we do have our children that are looking at us uh -huh. and how we navigate. Yeah. So, um, and, and to close out, I mean, first of all, it feels good to be back on the podcast. I guess, man. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> this setting has me very chilled, relaxed. I feel like I can really say some things in this setting like i can really just like fire off if i wanted to but still yet yeah, be comfortable so is this how we podcast it's gonna be how we podcast you know so it's gonna have to be the new stew with blankets and stuff too try me told you Thanks. comfortable this is this is a new day. This is the Moentive Comfort Podcast. So, well, thank y'all for tuning in to this podcast of the wins and the losses. Um, if you have liked this, continue to subscribe. Mm -hmm. Continue to like this. Does bump us up in the algorithm. <laughs> um, uh, share this. Uh, don't just keep it all to yourself, you know. Um, and another thing, if if you are a non-believer, if you are a non-believer, um, I want you to say this prayer with me, because I believe we we're, we're in that time and we're in that moment where the world is shaping and forming not only us but it's shaping and forming our young mm -hmm. people so if you're listening to this and you would like to be saved um we want to lead you in a number one a prayer of repentance and then you coming to god and those who are backslid you can come back to god so my wife is going to lead in a prayer. Come on, get your face. Come on now. What? Going to lead you in a prayer that, you know, of repentance and then accepting Christ into your life. Because it's all about if you believe that he has died and rose again for the remission of your sin, <laughs> then you're saved. So it, it's no hooping, no hollering, anything like that. But if you believe that in your heart, that God has, that he has died, that Jesus has died, and then he has came back from the grave for you, then you are saved. So, wife. This man here, I tell you. See how he got me? <laughs> Gotta do what we call to do. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for anyone that is uh, listening to this podcast or watching uh the video that you just touch them right where they are god god for it we ask that you just forgive those who have backslidden god and remind them of your word god for you said you are married to the backslider father so i ask that in these times father laid upon their heart for them to turn fully back to you god not being a lukewarm Christian God, not straddling the fence, God, not half in, half out. But God, I ask that you just touch their hearts right now, God, and forgive them, Father, for everything that they've done that is not of you, God. So we ask that you just create in them a clean heart and renew a right spirit, God. And help them to connect with a church home, Father, where they can continue to seek your face. God, and we thank you for those that have backslidden. 
God, there's somebody listening to this podcast right now, Father, and they don't know who you are. God, is that person that we're speaking to, Father? Is that person that we want them to turn their life around and come to you, Father? So those of you that are listening to this and you want to give your life to Christ, God, we we thank we thank you for them, Father. And you say this prayer. God, come into my life and save my soul. God, I honor you. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to die for my sin so that I may have everlasting life, God, and have it more abundantly. God, renew my mind renew my heart God help me to walk in you help me to turn to you father God you're the only one that could do it and no one else can the world can't do it so God rest and rule and abide in me thank you for sending your one and only begotten son to die for me so that I can live in eternity with you. If you prayed any one of these prayers, reach out to us, reach out to a friend that you know that is in a church home so that you can connect with the right people. This walk isn't easy. You're going to have wins. You're going to have losses. But it's really about what you do in the process. If you are not a believer. And if you are a believer and you're in this thing. Be vulnerable. Be open. Be surrounded. Be surrounded by people who will keep you uplifted at all times. Yeah. Social media can't do it. No. Your friend that going to tell you to go to the club can't do it. You need to be surrounded by people who understand and who will encourage you in the faith. And those are people who understand your walk. So if you have said those prayers, leave in the comments all plain and simple and say, I did. Then... If you want to reach out to us, you can always uh, hit us on our Instagram, mm-hmm. um, our TikTok, and uh, we'll get back with you. <laughs> and like we always say around right about this time, keep God first. And the rest, as I say, you can be doing. We'll be at it. Guys, we thank you for tuning in to the Mo and Tiff podcast that's my little dance season three season episode three. Four, 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 baby. baby so he did he gonna see he, he, he gonna he, tear up the whole stuff he is he see? and we out thank you for you jump on the ceiling do what you wanna go ahead and party girl who's gonna stop you